Hello and welcome to Revit Beginner Program. Today in this episode, I'm going to talk to you about how to create your own custom title block family. Let's begin. To begin with, I'm going to go ahead and create a new project based on an architectural template. Now, once I am in my project, I can go ahead and now view new sheet and load a particular default title block family that I have and start using it. And this particular default family that I have from my library includes a couple of different features which I want to show you before we jump into creating our own custom title block. Now here you have a company logo included. Apart from that, you have a few text here. But there are two different types of text. One which is the label. For example, this owner title, you can select it and try to change it. Let's change it to XYZ client. Now the name of this client is a parameter connected to the project information. For example, let's go under manage under project information. You will see the parameter called client name, which has now changed to XYZ client. This means that this is a project parameter common for this entire project. So if you make a change in one place, it has changed in the project settings. So for example, when I go under view new sheet and create a one more sheet, you will see that the name of the client remains consistently the same on all the sheets. If I change it here, you will see that on A101 sheet, it has also changed. So this is a dynamic text, which is called labels, and they are connected always to a parameter. Same thing is with the project name. Let's change the project name to, to sample project. Now there are some labels which are not project specific, but sheet specific. For example, the na name of the sheet, number of the sheet. Now every single instance of the sheet will have a different value for this particular parameter. For example, this one here is the name of the sheet. Now I'll say, okay, this one is a ground floor plan. And once you do the, make a change here in this title block, you will see that that change has occurred in the properties of this particular sheet. If I go to A102, there is no change in the sheet name because that is an instance property of this particular sheet. I can go here in the properties and say, okay, this is the first floor plan. And that is going to change over here. Let's go a step down here and you'll see that there are two types of text available here. One is a project number, which is a heading of that uh, label. And the second project number is actual number. So if you select on this text, you're not actually able to edit it. Whereas if you select this text, which is actually a label, that you are able to change. So if I change my project number to, let's say, A, B, C, 0, 1, that has updated the label project number. Now, because this is a project number which is belonging to a project parameter, I'll have to go on a project, a project information and check the project number is ABC01. If I change it to 011, you will see that it has also updated here, not only on this sheet, but in all the sheets that you have in your project. I'm going to create your own custom title block. It's really important to understand the difference between the text and a label and how are we going to use it in our sheet. Now let's go ahead and start creating our own new family of title block. So I'll go into file, new, and all the way down on the title block. This will take you to a family templates of title blocks. Let's go ahead and create a maybe A3 size uh, paper. Now, when you open the title block family, you will basically have a rectangle which represents the, your paper. Now, because we have chosen the family template of A3 size, this rectangle is already 420 by 297 size. But you can always customize this rectangle to suit your paper size that you want for your title block to be in. This current template is landscape oriented. If you want your title block to be in portrait orientation, let's go ahead and select that, rotate this to 90 degrees. And now you have a portrait paper. Now and let's go ahead create a few lines. Now the first thing I like to do is create in the inner border which is going to represent our printer margin. So I'm going to select an offset of about 10 millimeters. Go near one of the lines, press tab to select the loop of lines and here we are. Now I have kept 10 millimeters the same on all sides but if your printer margins are different you can always select this 
and let's say on left side you want this to be 20 millimeters but not 10. De depending on the kind of printer you have you can set your title block accordingly. Whenever you're going to print to scale this outer paper is going to be exactly the size of your paper. However sometimes when you're printing your drawings on scale to fit it means that this outer border is also going to be printed on your paper. So to avoid this kind of double borders what I like to do always is to take my external boundary which represents my paper and change its category to invisible lines. So it is there it's simply invisible so it's not visible in your print. So this is the border that you would really print and you can always select these lines and make it uh, wide lines or uh, for different line style if you like to make your borders more uh, interesting. Now we are ready to create the inner title block and we are going to go ahead take lines and maybe I want to keep about lines like this. You can, so I'm going to create something like this here and I'm going to make this everything a little bit more consistent so I'm going to make it equal I'm also going to make a division horizontally let's say I want to make about here and let's copy this to be about 10 10 so there are about four divisions here now let's go ahead and add um, maybe our company logo over here so I'm going to insert and import an image file which is the logo and I'm going to put it up here resize it to suit my design. The next let's add a few project parameters labels. Let's go ahead under create and you have label and text. Now you understand the difference between the two. Text is something that doesn't change used for headings. Labels is something that is going to change and the values are going to come from the project or from the sheet. So let's go ahead and add a label and I'm going to call this name of the project. Now this is a very big font so I'm going to change my font size, edit type duplicate and make it about let's say five millimeters. I like to make it transparent background so that it doesn't hide all the lines or any other text in the background and let's make it centrally aligned. Now I can simply copy this one and put it up here and change edit label and change my label from project name into project address maybe. Now the project address doesn't have to be so big so I can again go back to edit type duplicate and make it about three millimeter size. Now let's try a couple of other parameters. For example, I'm going to go ahead and create a label for my client name which is over here and maybe I don't want this particular line and I'm going to decrease that and make it centrally aligned. Let's, let's go ahead and create a label for our sheet name. So let's go and add this one. I'm going to change the size to be five millimeters here. Now this is the name of the sheet that is actual name of the sheet which is coming from the parameter. But I also need a heading saying that it is a name of the sheet. So for this I'm going to use a normal text call it sheet name. This one I want this to be about two millimeters a small heading which is a transparent background. So this is the heading the sheet name and this is the actual name of the sheet. Yeah. Similarly, you can add a couple of more parameters. Let's go ahead and add a few more. I'm going to copy these here and instead of sheet name, I'm going to call it sheet issue date and change this label to sheet issue date. Here, I want to change this to sheet number edit my label, remove the existing label and instead add another one with a sheet number. Now because this could be a small one I can further make a division in this row and copy this two things over here and maybe call this scale and change this label from sheet number 
to scale. There we are. Now let's maybe add a date and timestamp over here. And I have something called date and timestamp. I'm, and I'm going to make it very small, maybe about 1.5 mm and make it right aligned, make it somewhere here. And I'm going to save this title block family as a sample A3 title block. And I'm going to now load this particular family in my project. Let's go ahead and create a new sheet. And now you will see that in this list, I have my custom sample A3 title block family too. I'm going to okay this and you will see that I have my title block. When I select this, you will see that the outer border is still there, but it's simply invisible. So the outer border represents your actual paper size. Here you'll see that my project name and client name is already updated as what we did in the beginning of this tutorial. So here, let's add a project address as Nepal. I go back to manage under project information, under project address, you will see that that has also updated. Let's go ahead and add a name of the sheet. Let's say uh, this one is particularly for including elevations. This is the issue date. You can always go ahead and change this. The sheet number is automatically A103 because the last one was A102. But of course, you can always change this. You can see this one is A111. And here you will see that sheet uh, number and name both have updated. Date timestamp is already here. When you go ahead and add a particular drawing on this, let's drag and drop an east elevation. The scale of this drawing is going to get updated automatically here. Now, as long as you have all the drawings at the same scale, your title block scale parameter is going to show you the same scale that is available in under your drawings. However, as soon as you have a different drawing at a different scale on the same on the same drawing, for example, this north elevation is at 1 is to 50 instead of uh, 1 is to 100 as in east elevation. The so title block scale parameter is not going to show you the scale, but instead it's going to say that as indicated. It means that whatever scale is shown under this drawing is the one that you should follow. Now there's one more important thing that we did not include in our custom title block, which is the revision table. How do you include a revision table in the title block family that updates automatically when you have revisions in your drawing? That is going to be the topic for our next episode. We're going to learn all about how to manage revisions in Revit and how to include a revision table, a revision schedule in a title block family. So please make sure that you subscribe. Stay tuned. I'll see you in the next one.